KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. We believe in the American way. We built this country called the USA. And we fly our flag because we're proud and free. We're Americans. Red, white, and blue is our way of life. Never back down from a challenge or a fight. Nature provides, God gives the rights. We're Americans. We fish the waters and we hunt the lands. We force the steel with our own two hands. With what we've got, we do the best we can. We're Americans. It's time now for the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show. Now, here's Grouchy. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Oh, we got a little recap to do here. We got a good, 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 exciting evening to go through. Well, you know, sort of exciting. It's been a slow news cycle, I'll confess. I mean, really, it, it hasn't been a whole lot of uh, things happening this past week that were worthwhile. Um, let's do a, a quick review over what's actually going on today. Uh, you know, what's what's hot on the news topics? Let's back up a few hours here and see what we got going on. Uh, uh, yeah, we have a gas leak that shut down westbound lanes of the uh, Katy Freeway near Houston. That was pretty big. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you've ever driven around Houston, but that's a big-ass town, and there's a lot of traffic there, so shutting down the interstate is not good. Uh, we had – where was, oh, where's the uh, – I saw something earlier about a hazmat issue that killed some people. Let me find that real quick. That was that was unreal. Um, oh, and there's a – yeah, that was pretty interesting today too. Kind of a slap in Obama's face. Uh, Miami Beach commissions votes to oppose hosting a Cuban consulate until the island's government enacts human rights reforms. Uh, man, you, you got to like that. I mean, telling Obama how it is. So uh, where is this hazmat story? I know I saw it. And, and I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, we got the White House uh, saying that President Obama will sign a Zika bill. Uh, but... Press Secretary Josh Earnest is saying that it's two months late and about $2 billion short of what is needed to address the threat. Uh, to me, that just screams government waste all over it, but we'll see. Um, they, they might actually try to do something about Zika, but I doubt it. It's, it's going to be kind of like uh, you know the after effects of um, Hurricane Sandy when they contracted CGI Federal out of Canada which is run by Michelle Obama's best friend from college, who's still sitting on about three and a half billion of the four billion dollars the government gave them to disperse out to people to help rebuild. They're just sitting there collecting the interest off that money. Nothing's going on to help the people. Screw them, right? It's all about Obama and his friends and who can do what for who up there in elite land. But, uh, and the Dow closed up. Uh, oil's going higher. Oh, and, you know, you heard about uh, Bruce Springsteen canceling his uh, North Carolina concert over the uh, the bathroom bill, we'll call it, in North Carolina that uh, won't let you go in the girl's bathroom if you have a penis, even if you identify as a girl. Um, you know, God forbid we should have some common sense in the world, but... You know, now we've got Ringo Starr canceling a show in North Carolina. I guess all three of his fans there will be heartbroken over that. Uh, that's assuming that two of them are even young enough to know or remember who he is. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, the Pennsylvania House is has voted... Uh, Overwhelmingly, three to one vote to send medical marijuana legislation to the governor. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, 
for for some people in my neck of the woods here, uh, if you're along the Gulf Coast area or in the Southeast in general, uh, the Bra the Atlanta Braves Hector Oliveira has been charged with assault and battery of a woman after an attack at an Arlington, Virginia hotel. Um, don't have any more details on that other than he has been charged. Uh, let's see. We have new rules to allow concealed carry handguns in classrooms and dorms on every Texas A&M campus. Go ahead on Texas. It's the way to let your students protect themselves. What else do we have here? Uh, I know that I saw, here we go, uh, Austin, Austin, Texas, firefighters on scene of hazmat situation near University of Texas. And uh, we've got one confirmed dead, six hospitalized, and at least five injuries in this situation uh, in Austin near the university. So uh, this is an ugly hazmat situation going on out there in Texas, and that was updated just about an hour ago. So uh, that is definitely something worth keeping your eye on if you're out there and looking. Um, we have a uh, suspect search underway after a man was fatally stabbed in Van Nuys out in California. Uh, don't know any more details of that. They didn't provide anything else. And we have a Texas Department of Public Safety officer says one of their troopers was involved in a shooting uh, near, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's pronunciation, so Rick, if you wrong or different, please butt in and tell me. Yano or Lano or, it's L-L-A-N-O, Texas. It would be Yano. Yeah, Yano. I was going to say the double L's always been pronounced as a Y as far as I know, so... Um, yeah, Yano, Texas, uh, had a trooper involved in a shooting out there. And those are your major, major headlines today. Um, anything else out there? I don't know about it at the moment. So feel free to, uh, chime in. And speaking of chiming in, if you want to join the G Nation and express your thoughts and opinions, whether it's, uh, something I'm talking about or whether you have something else on your mind altogether, the number here is 408-681-8255. That is 408-681-8255. Or feel free to go to k98talk.org and jump into the chat room. Uh, I'll take your questions there as well. And with that, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off last Wednesday. Uh, we were actually discussing, what were we discussing? Oh, yeah, this thing called the Panama Papers. Woo! Yeah, that's right. The Panama Papers. So... You know, we, we covered a good bit last week. We talked about what the papers were, what the papers showed. Uh, we talked exactly about how much just pure data there really is in this, in this information dump and compared it uh, to the WikiLeaks, uh, you know, just tremendous, tremendously huge data dump that was basically stolen from the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca, and, you know, it was one of the things that we uh, touched on last week was that there were very few Americans listed in the Panama Papers. And the ones that were listed were just, you know, your average everyday private citizens. And I kind of kind of got into, you know, I don't want to back up into last week too much. You, you, you know, if you missed last week, feel free to jump to the K98talk.org uh, page. Uh, Stitcher, tune in. Uh, we've, we've got archives of the show. You can pick up last week's episode, catch yourself up. It's the thing to do. And, and by the way, not just my show, K98 Talk, 
has a lot of great shows you should be just jumping into the archives of and just listening to because it's fun, it's informative, and you know, each in our own unique way, we, we talk about things that are important. They may not be what you hear on TV all the time, but that's because what you hear on TV all the time is usually meant to distract you from what's really happening. Now, I'm not a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist kind of guy, but think long and hard about it and think about why news media outlets want you to hear the stories that they're broadcasting and not some of the other things that you hear about. Just think about it. Anyway, uh, back to our Panama Papers here. Um, the reason that there aren't a lot of big name Americans out there in this data dump is that because the United States is actually more lax when it comes to financial transparency than the country of Panama. Now, the, um, the Tax Justice Network, and I'd never heard of them before, but uh, doing a little research, I dug up this organization, and uh, they actually did a study on the top 10 countries with the least financial transparency, uh, making for perfect tax havens for those quote-unquote unsavory characters looking to hide or launder their ill-gotten cash. Uh, and, and not even their ill-gotten cash, but some of their legitimately earned cash. You know, it is what it is. But uh, this, this recent leak of documents from the Panamanian law firm has revealed how tax havens are used to hide wealth and has focused the world's attention on the Central American nation. But international organizations which investigate financial secrecy warn that Panama is not even in the top 10 of the countries with the least financial transparency. So according to the Tax Justice Network, here are those top 10 countries in order. Okay, so this will be the, um, I, I guess we'll start with the most transparent on the list and work our way to the very least of the transparent countries. Uh, okay, so, you know, the, the, the sooner you get mentioned on this list, the better you are, which means you're, you know, the 10th place of the worst. But anyway, uh, first on the list, United Arab Emirates. And not a huge surprise, you know. There, there are a lot of uh, of Arab businessmen, uh, royalty, and things like that that want to hide money. Uh, Bahrain, which is over there, right next to UAE, uh, they're they're next on the list. Uh, after them is Germany, uh, and and not what you would associate as a hotbed of banking, the country of Lebanon. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, and there's there you know, middle of the pack secrecy here. Luxembourg comes in next. And, and I knew a little bit about Luxembourg from some of the time I spent overseas in the military. Uh, next up, uh, the one that a lot of people know about, the Cayman Islands. Uh, and, and the more I know about them, the more I like about the way they do business. Uh, it's too bad I don't have enough money to try to hide. So that doesn't really matter. Uh, after the Cayman Islands is Singapore. And you can just imagine how fun that is. Uh, next on the list, number eight, the United States of America, or number three, since we're going in reverse order. The number three worst country in the world for financial transparency, the United States. Now you know why there aren't a lot of Americans in this Panama Papers data dump. Okay, next up. Hong Kong, which, you know, you can throw right in there with Singapore and the Cayman Islands. They're, they're pretty restrictive. And then last and certainly not least, but most non-transparent country out there when it comes to banking is Switzerland. They're legendary. Everybody knows about Swiss bank accounts. Okay. So basically what we have here is we have a double standard 
that many uh, industrial slash developed countries host or support jurisdictions where there's an absence of financial transparency. And as we just discussed, Switzerland leads the ranking with its almost impenetrable tradition of secrecy in the banking business. So even if under international pressure, it has recently made some concessions towards identifying the owners of accounts linked to international tax evasion investigations, but they're still, even after those concessions, the the least transparent country when it comes to banking. Now, within the United States borders, and just a stone's throw from the White House itself, the East Coast state of Delaware is home to about 945,000 firms, corporations, trusts, etc., which equates to almost one for every resident in the state. Delaware is one of four U.S. states, with the others being Nevada, Arizona, and Wyoming, that have been criticized for their lax financial regulations. And many of the firms are suspected of being ghost or shell companies. Now, Transparency International, which is an anti-corruption campaigning movement, describes the state of Delaware as a transnational crime haven. Meanwhile, another possible reason for the small presence of Americans in the Panama documents is that U.S. citizens hoping to hide funds and activities offshore were not drawn to Spanish-speaking Panama as a haven where there are options uh, in places like the British Virgin Islands and the Cayman Islands. So, you know, Americans have a lot of tax havens to choose from, um, tax havens uh, and men who stole the world. A great book. You should pick that up and read it. Uh, it's a little tinfoily, so take it with a grain of salt, but there are some good facts in it. It's a book that's really, uh, it really focuses on the secretive centers for hiding money around the world and who's using them. So do yourself a favor, jump into that book. Um, it's uh, the, the author is Nicholas Shaxon. That's S-H-A-X-O-N. And uh, again, the title of the book is Treasure Islands, Tax Havens, and the Men Who Stole the World. Excellent book. So, you know, we're still dealing with Panama Papers here. We've got Russia, China, Britain, Iceland. The revelations of the Panama Papers have tarnished officials and the wealthy over the, impl over the implication that they hide riches offshore. Now, why is this important? Well, think about what's going on in the world today. With all the whining and crying, especially of the liberal set, about income equality and blah, 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 rich people do this, rich people do that. We talked about some of this last week, you know, uh, especially in places like Russia and the country of Georgia, the Eastern Bloc uh, countries. A lot of these people are simply hiding their money from the criminals that steal from the banks over there regularly. We think we hear a lot about bank robberies here in the U S you know, you hear about the branch of Wells Fargo being knocked over for $45,000 or, uh, regions bank is big in my area. You know, regions bank gets robbed two, three times a month, one branch or another around here. Um, it's always in the news. So a lot of these people are banking offshore simply to, to keep their wealth safe whether it's ill-gotten or legitimate, uh, who's to say, you know, until there's proof otherwise, you have to, uh, well, you know, at least here in the United States, you have to assume innocent until proven guilty. Uh, that's not how a lot of people act, you know, but that's, it's important that we remember that that is the standard of proof. Um, like I said, the group that's not present in this dump is the prominent Americans. Uh, U.S. tycoons, politicians, they're all notably absent in the leaked files uh, from the Panama law offices of Mossack Fonseca, uh, which created thousands of shell companies worldwide to hide the identities of their ultimate owners, 
some of whom may have been evading taxes. There is a couple of, hey, you know, there's a, there's a name here. If you know uh, the music industry at all, uh, there is a Hollywood mogul named David Geffen uh, uh, of Geffen Records, of Asylum Records, and DreamWorks SKG. Um, he's on the list. Uh, but there are no Americans comparable to Iceland's prime minister or the henchmen that work directly under Russian premier Vladimir Putin, uh, at least uh, in what's been disclosed so far. You know, uh, there, there are a lot of Americans, but they are private citizens. They're not the big names. You know, you're not going to... You're not going to recognize Charlie Smith. Uh, You know, Charlie Smith probably made himself five or ten million dollars in some kind of uh, dot com startup back in the 90s and has been trying to live off the interest. And he's just hiding his wealth. You know, you're not going to know him. Uh, He probably doesn't live in a really big house. He probably doesn't live real fancy, but he's never short for cash. You know, it's it's these type of people. It's it's the type people that make. Five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, and are sick and tired of the government milking them for forty or even fifty percent of their money. It's ridiculous. Okay, I get why people would do it. If I had enough money, I'd do it myself. It's not illegal. So anyway, um, you got this international consortium of investigative journalists which coordinated the investigation and release of the Panama Papers. Uh, this, this doesn't mean that Americans have embraced financial transparency because they're not on the list. It doesn't show that the U.S. is outside of the offshore system. Uh, the U.S. is a player in this. Uh, one possible reason, uh, again, is the, the language barrier. And that would send somebody from the U.S. to a different place to look to hide their money, somebody that it's easier to communicate with. So, um, you know, we we don't have to go abroad to hide our funds. We can actually do it mostly right here in the United States. Uh, Again, states like Delaware and Wyoming, Arizona, uh, allow the creation of such companies for just a few hundred dollars that will conceal – their identity. It, it's crazy. So, uh, and, you know, all this is going on while U.S. banks um, are normally required to know their customers. You know, that's uh, one of the regulations that's in quotes in the government regs is, you know, banks have to quote unquote know their customers. They can bypass that rule and open accounts for shell companies ensuring total discretion for someone who wants to move money around quietly. Now, the U.S. Treasury is moving to stop this practice, uh, which can be used by arms and drug traffickers uh, to launder funds and ranks uh, the United States third, as we covered that top 10 list, well above Panama, which didn't even make the top 10. And not only are these people looking to hide uh, money from ill-gotten things like arms and drugs, but folks, the human trafficking money, oh my God, you know, we just, we don't even think about the things like this. Um, it, it's stunning and we don't even have time to go into the numbers on this. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe one week in the future, I can get all the numbers put together and we'll compare the drug money and the arms money and the trafficking, uh, the human trafficking money. And, and we'll see, you know, something that's quite scary, actually, that I I already know is quite scary, uh, percentage-wise, how close human trafficking is to drugs and arms as far as money made and moved. Um, So we've got Treasury looking to plug those loopholes, uh, and they're in the last stages of drafting a rule. You know, so says the Treasury Department. The last stages could be uh, next week. It could be next year. Uh, Who knows? Um, But there is another reason that Americans are not so visible in the Panama Papers. So 
spurred by the need to halt huge, blatant tax evasion by Americans using foreign banks, uh, in recent years, Washington has cracked down with lawsuits, arrests, and tighter laws that have targeted both the banks offering safe haven and those hiding the money in them. Swiss banks were hit in particular. Uh, UBS and Credit Suisse, respectively, had to pay fines of $780 million and $2.6 billion for having helped U.S. citizens hide money. Now... The result is that there are few tax havens around the world uh, that are not, well, that are willing to take American clients. Uh, there's only a few left that aren't afraid uh, because they know that the U.S. can hit them. Eh, you know, whatever. I don't know how much of a deterrent that is, uh, especially if you thin things out well and, and you know, cover yourself that way. But, uh it, it still leaves a lot to be examined in this trove of 11 and a half million documents that make up the Panama Papers. And, you know, quite frankly, there could be more Americans in there. We just haven't got to it yet. It's a huge trove of documents. It's something that people are going to be working on for quite a while. Um, I, I suspect we probably haven't heard the end of it. And if you remember last week, uh, we did go in and we actually tied a few people that were pretty prominent on the list back to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton from her days in the State Department uh, as Secretary of State. Again, that's in last week's episode. You can catch that out of the archives. Um, and if you can't figure out how to do that, you can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, it's at TCC underscore Grouchy. That's right, TCC underscore Grouchy on Twitter. You can't miss it. Uh, I will I will post you a link if you come to me and tell me you can't find it. Uh, not a problem. So we are at the bottom of the hour. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to move on away from the Panama Papers for a little bit, I think. And uh, we've we've got to start talking, you know, election and candidates and things like that, of course. Tis the season, right? So anyway, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Glad you're here. You and me Ain't that America Something to see, baby Ain't that America All on the free You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287 This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical With proper care and feeding your pistol will be ready when you need it There to save your life Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and 
and listen for the spark. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment. Reduce your payments by 30 to 50% and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15 minute consultation. Call 800 826 1246. 800 826 1246. That's 800 826 1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Oh, but ain't that America? Ain't that America? Something to see, baby. Ain't that America? All on the free. All right. Welcome back, everybody. So glad you are here. Before we get going again, moving into stories that are making the headlines, um, let me first tell you, every night, it doesn't matter. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every night, prime time on K98talk.org, you have the best of the best. Night in, night out. I'm telling you, we've got uh, Monday night, we have Real Serious Nonsense with Angie and Clay. Uh, we've got Rick with America Off the Rails. Every night, Monday through Friday, Rick is the man. Rick is the man. I say it again because it's true. And uh, if you don't believe me, he's he's on he's on the air with me right now. He can tell you too. But anyway, uh, Tuesday night, and Rick, you got to help me out with this because I can't remember everybody. Um, Tuesday night, we've got Doc and Lou, right? Yep. Wake up America Radio, eight Eastern, Wake, seven Central. There you go. Wake up America Radio uh, with Doctor Arrington and uh, with Lou. And we also have J.D. and Stacy on Tuesday night uh, with Game On. And you definitely don't want to miss that. That is a cross between somebody who is as sharp as a tack and somebody, uh, what did I, as sharp as a tack, and then somebody who is as tacky as a shark. I don't know. You figure it out. A um, <laughs> couple of great people there. And, and Rick knows which one is smart and which one isn't. They, actually, they both are. They really are. Um, but you'll see what I mean. One drives the other crazy. Uh, it's quite the entertaining show. Do yourself a favor and tune in. Of course, Wednesday night, you're here now with me. You know what's going on and you'll stay tuned for Rick two hours later. Why two hours later? Because it takes that long for what I'm laying on you to sink in. That's why. Um, Thursday night, you get JD and Stacy all over again with a brand new game on for Thursday night. Rick, is there anybody else on Thursday night that I'm forgetting? Um, actually, you? well, on Tuesday nights, we kind of forgot somebody. The Loftus Party actually runs as soon as I'm off the air. Oh, um, the Loftus Party, late night. Yeah. yeah. Michael uh, Loftus is great. Then on Thursdays, or hang on, no, we did that backwards. Thursdays is when Lou and Dr. A are on the air. Oh, so, so we did put back. Hang on, hang on. Let's back up. We have, and pardon the background noise, folks. We have um, seven o'clock in the evening, right before you, um, Eastern, right before you go on the air. We have um, a replay of Opinion Nation. Then we have you. Then we have, or, or no, then we have. I'm sorry, I'm all kinds of kerfuffled. So Tuesday, uh, seven Eastern, Opinion Nation, eight o'clock, game on with JD and Stacy. Pardon me, apparently I'm having some sort of a meltdown over here. <laughs> Live radio, folks, you can't beat it, I'm telling you now. 
Uh, so then we have a uh, 9 o'clock hour on Tuesday. I honestly cannot remember. It's uh, it's 9 Eastern is J.D. and Stacey. Then me. 10 o'clock is um, when Loftus airs. Thursday, it's the reverse. We have Blue and Dr. Arrington in the 7 o'clock spot. Game on with J.D. and Stacey. And then 9 o'clock is me. Uh, nothing on in the 10 o'clock hour yet. And those times are central. And there you go, folks. And uh, there you go. Like I said, every single night, quality programming. Uh, we're, we're, we're adding quality names, quality shows. Just do yourself a favor and, and tune in. You can't go wrong. Okay. So moving along, during the commercial break, uh, a, a friend of mine uh, posted an article that I think is worth uh, taking on the fly and throwing in here. Uh, we have... Representative Mark Walker uh, says liberals are exploiting the bathroom bill in North Carolina for political gain. Now, if you're not familiar what's going on, um, just you're going to love this, okay? Um, so a bathroom bill, a rock star, and competing claims of privacy have catapulted North Carolina into the center of a national debate over transgender rights. And Representative Mark Walker of North Carolina says he knows why. The freshman senator argues that Democrats are manufacturing outrage over the law for political gain in the Tar Heel State. And you say, well, why would they even bother doing that in North Carolina? Well, the reason why is that North Carolina is supposed to be a purple state. Now, for those of you that are involved in the political process, you know what a purple state is. It's it's a little bit blue. It's a little bit red. It's it's like a big bruise on the ass of America. But um, what we've got going on here is Walker is interpreting the Democrat outrage over the issue as part of a calculated strategy to retake control of the state Senate and turn the state blue, establishing a base of support for the presidential election. North Carolina is the battleground state in the South, he said. Yeah, I'm not so I'm not a hundred percent sold on that statement, but I mean I, I get where he's coming from here. So currently the battle is raging over a state law commonly referred to as HB2 or the bathroom bill. Yeah. Republican Governor Pat McCrory called the General Assembly into special one day session on March twenty third to pass HB two in the law. That legislation overruled a local Charlotte ordinance that allowed individuals to choose a public bathroom corresponding with their gender identity and not their biological sex. Now, there's some of you out there that are scratching your head going, what the hell did he just say? Well, basically what I said is that if you are a man and you want to be a perv and go into the girl's bathroom and do pervy things or even worse, uh, this bill gave you the right to do that just by saying that you identify as a woman. Now, that's not to say that it's only men that are criminals in this type aspect. Um, as we see quite often in the news, uh, many, many of the teachers that are arrested for having sex with minor children in schools are women. So it does run both ways. But I'm telling you now, either way, it shouldn't happen. It absolutely should not happen. So we've got all these companies like PayPal and uh, uh, who's, oh God, who's the big bank in North Carolina? I forget. Um Anyway, they're, you know, they're all threatening. Uh, PayPal now has said that, oh, well, since you did this and we're all about uh, including everybody, including LGBT, which this is not an anti-LGBT uh, law. Uh, this is a common sense law. I'm sorry. If you are a man who wants to call yourself a woman, that does not give you the right to go in the women's bathroom and... Uh, expose yourself to women and little girls. It does not. You know, you, you want to, you want to go the Caitlyn Jenner route, the Bruce Jenner route, and you want to have things lopped off and tucked in and added up top. And you want to, you want to actually take the plunge and remove the plumbing. 
maybe a different story. Maybe a different story. Okay. Um, there, there's room to talk about that. But what there is not room to talk about is having grown men who just want to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a woman today. I'm going in the woman's bathroom. No, that is a load of crap. And quite frankly, you know, my daughter's grown. But if she came running out of a public bathroom and told me that there was a man in there exposing himself to the women, that guy's going to get his ass kicked. If she didn't do it on the way out, I'm going to do it when he's on his way out. So anyway, um, you know, they, they pass this thing into law and they say that the bill is necessary to preserve privacy and safety rights of women, girls, and just children in general. Uh, the question that's been asked several times that can't be answered is what if you have a sexual predator posing as a transgender who wants to use the girl's restroom? Boom. How do you resolve that in the girls' showers and locker rooms in schools? I, again, I, if my daughter were in high school and a 17-year-old boy decided that he was not a boy anymore and he's a girl and he wanted to shower with the girls, that is not cool. I don't care what he thinks he is. He can take his fairy dust and his unicorn farts and he can go home and shower. I don't really care. Opponents have condemned this law as bigoted and charged that it places LGBT individuals in danger. How are they in danger? By having to use a bathroom that corresponds to their biological sex? To have, you know, for having to use a bathroom uh, that is configured for their proper anatomy? How does that put them in danger? Uh, unless you walk into a men's bathroom and start screaming, Ooh, I'm a transgender, I think I'm a woman, but I still have a penis. And, you know, okay, if you want to advertise it like a moron, maybe, maybe somebody cares enough to smack your head around. Maybe they don't. I certainly don't. I don't care if you're gay, if you're bisexual, if you're transsexual, go in the damn bathroom, do what you have to do, wash your hands, and get the hell out. Who cares about what you do at home? So the protest came to a head last Friday when Bruce Springsteen nixed an upcoming concert in North Carolina just two days before the show. So, you know, now you've got um, politicians accusing the boss of being a bully. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. Like I mentioned, these companies up there, um, and I don't remember the bank. I wish I could. I, I think it's Bank of America, but I'm not 100% certain. But PayPal operates in Middle Eastern countries where – Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people are stoned to death, thrown off the tops of skyscrapers, and let splat on the sidewalks. But they don't have any qualms with doing business in these countries. But they're going to complain about people being forced to use. So Representative Walker, uh, back to the story here, said that Springsteen has every right to cancel his show, but there is a hypocrisy. You know, he criticized Springsteen for canceling on short notice, doing harm to the local economy, and then continuing his tour in other states that have no more stringent anti-discriminatory laws than North Carolina. And... You know, Walker continued to say that he believes that Democrats have intentionally ginned up opposition for a calculated and political end. 
And he said, quote, I think that's ultimately some of the reasoning behind it. So it's not unusual for the Tar Heel State to waver between red and blue during both Senate and presidential races. Uh, in the 2008 general election, Democrats carried that state four years before Republicans did in 2012. Another Republican member of the North Carolina congressional delegate, Representative Mark Meadows, agrees that the issue has been blown way out of proportion. He said it doesn't deserve national headlines and it shouldn't be trending on social media. Men need to use the men's restroom. Women need to use the women's restroom, he said. For over 200 years, we haven't had a problem defining that. North Carolina is not the only state grappling with bathroom bills. We've got South Dakota. Uh, you got a governor, uh, Dennis uh, Dalgard, uh, vetoed legislation that would ban students from using restrooms opposite of from their biological sex. Tennessee is considering similar legislation that would require public students or public school students to use the restroom that matches their sex at birth. So, folks, this is still a hot plate thing. Uh, why? I don't know. Apparently, common sense is only common to those that have it, and there apparently are a lot of people in some states that simply don't. So, that being said, I will thank my friend a little later for the article. Um, if you are listening now, you know who you are. Thank you very much. Smile, you did a great thing. And we're going to continue. the same first, and, and we'll discuss what he's really upset about. Speaking to thousands packed in a frigid airport hangar in western New York on Sunday, Trump ripped the Byzantine fight over delegates at the heart of his party's nominating process. He argued again that the person who wins the most votes in the primary process should automatically be the GOP nominee. It's funny how he never had opinion about it before he ran. It, it was never important until he actually got in the lead. He says uh, what they're trying to do is subvert the movement with crooked shenanigans, comparing his woes to those of Bernie Sanders, who is winning states but still far behind Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton in the race for delegates that decide party nominations. We should have won it a long time ago, Trump said, but, you know, we keep losing where we're winning. Now, <laughs> Trump was coming to terms with the political reality of candidates chasing delegates ahead of their nominees. first smart hire that Trump has really made. Okay. Uh, Manafort said uh, on Meet the Press Sunday uh, at the rally in Rochester that Trump repeatedly insisted his campaign was doing fine and predicted he would clinch the nomination before the summer convention. Nonetheless, his supporters described with disdain what they saw as an effort by the party's establishment to deny Trump a victory they feel he has already earned. I'm 59 years old, and maybe I've had my head in the sand through the years, but I've never seen anything like this, said Cheryl Griggs of Hilton, New York, who attended the rally with her son. To go against the votes of the people and the will of the people and put somebody else in there, I think, is horrific. Uh, Cheryl, you have had your head in the sand, and this has been going on for quite some time. Welcome to the political process. Quit your whining, learn how the game is played, and get active in your community and do something about it if you don't like it. She said she doesn't understand the delegate process. She admitted it and believes that the winner should be decided by popular vote. 
Maybe, maybe not. That's a whole other topic. There are valid arguments either way. But Rochester's Scott Nasca says he worries that the efforts would only leave Trump bruised heading into the general election. The sad thing is the guy's got to go against the Democratic establishment, and now he's got to go against his own party's establishment as well. And it's not right, said Nasca. This is the theme of Trump's campaign. It should be his slogan. It's not fair. (laughs) They claim it's absolutely ridiculous to have to do it the way that it's been done for, what, 50, 60 years now. Uh, He's a threat to the big people in politics, the lobbyists, the elitists, and the Republican Party. Okay, you know, I, I get some of that. Uh, they're going to disenfranchise their own voters. Yeah, to a degree they are. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm anti-Trump. Okay. I'm not a Trump fan. I will say that in, in all earnestness. Uh, you know, if you're a Trump fan, that's fine. Own it. Stand there and argue with me on facts why I should change my vote to Trump. I don't think you can convince me with facts because the facts that I read that Trump has published himself on his own website, his tax plan is a wreck. Okay. Especially for middle class, which is the group he claims to be helping the most. Um, you know, that's just the start. Um, this is a guy who, while he says he, personally doesn't believe in abortion, that he thinks it should still be legal. Hey, G, before okay. we get too past, uh, too far past the Trump thing, I forgot to tell you, we have something in from a correspondent in regards to the Colorado stuff. thought you might want to play oh. it. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's hear the Colorado stuff. Let's do this. So uh, here is uh, Trump's statement shortly after his recent loss in Colorado. Sorry, it seemed fitting. I had to run. I love it. It's it's perfect because that that's the exact same statement that he's been making for months about things. Um, You know, and I I get it. Okay, if it if Trump wins the nomination. okay, and I've said this before, um, I have always been a firm believer in that you back. The candidate of your party, because. Even if you have to hold your nose and swing the lever in that direction, it's easier to get part of your agenda accomplished with somebody that agrees with part of it than it is to get part of your agenda accomplished with somebody that believes in none of it. And it may come down to that stinky, smelly choice. I don't know. Cruz has the ground game going right now. Um, he came within an inch of being endorsed by Rubio, uh, as Rubio made the comment that the only conservative left on the, uh, Republican ticket was Cruz. And he said that we need to back that, that conservative candidate. Um, so, you know, for what that's worth, it's, it's kind of a, a left-handed behind the back chicken wing endorsement, but you know, that's Rubio, I guess. Maybe he's still a little bit sore. I don't know. But anyway, um, you know, the the Colorado thing. Colorado's Republican convention rules were written in 1912. 1912. They were not designed with Donald Trump in mind. For Trump to say that they stacked the deck against him in Colorado is dishonest at best, stupid at worst. And my guess is that like the truth, it usually falls somewhere in the middle. So Manafort is accusing the Cruz campaign of using the scorched earth approach in which they don't care about the party. Uh, If they don't get what they want, they blow it up. Uh, you know what? I could say the same thing about Trump. 
it sounds like he's doing the same thing. He's not unifying the party. You want to talk about somebody unifying the party? Look at Ted Cruz. Just months ago, this man was mocked by most of the people in his own party. They called him Wacko Bird. They said he, he had no credibility. They said he was dishonest. They said he was nothing but a disruptor. But you know what? They're coming together behind Cruz. Now, some people say that's because Cruz sold out. I haven't seen him selling anything yet. Okay? This is, this is tinfoil hat talk. You know, you, you can accuse him of selling out, but until he does something to prove that he has sold out, it's all accusation and innuendo, which the Trump campaign is really good at. So anyway, uh, the key for both candidates is uncommitted delegates. That is the electability of a candidate in the Republican Party. And like I said, last week, Cruz swept Colorado's 34 delegates by locking up the remaining 13 at the party state convention in Colorado Springs. He had already collected 21. Trump still has a narrow path to nailing down the nomination by the end of the primaries on June 7th, but he has little room for error and would need to win nearly 60% of the remaining delegates to clinch the nomination before the convention and right now he's winning at about a 45% clip, so it would take a little something. Uh, following Cruz's sweep of Colorado, uh, the remaining delegates there, the Associated Press count stands 743 for Trump, 545 for Cruz, Kasich still at 143, uh, and Rubio ended his campaign, has 171 delegates that are still bound to him. What a difference that could make if they swing one way strong or the other. Um, anyway, you know, just something to think about. And we didn't get to everything tonight, but oh, well, you know, that happens. Sometimes I overprepare. Uh, that's just one of those things we can save and tuck away for another night. It is the top of the hour, folks. It is time. Sometimes, he says, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, I know. I hardly ever get through all my notes, do I? I it's crazy. Unless uh, you leave them at work, then you get through them, get through them pretty quick. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I mean, that, that happens. But tonight I made it halfway through. I still got eight pages to go. Good God. What did I do? <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, as always, I do a lot of homework for you. Um, but I still encourage you to do your own. It's so important that you do your own homework and find your own facts and formulate your own opinions based on those facts. You don't have to take my word for it. Uh, I promise you one thing. I will present facts. Uh, I will give you my opinion on those facts, but they are all based in fact. So as always, do your own homework. And also, as always, if you like the show, tell a friend. If your friend likes the show, you likely need new friends. But they and you are welcome here every Wednesday night on the Conservative Curmudgeon Show. Thank you for joining the G Nation tonight. And God bless. And we'll see you next week. Oh, but ain't that America? You and me. Ain't that America? Something to see, baby. Ain't that America? All on the free. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.